Welcome to the Adam Messer Show. I'm your host, Adam Messer, and I interview <coughs> authors, artists, and entertainers. We discuss their process, how they overcome obstacles, and their creative works. I hope you enjoy the show. You've been listening to the Adam Messer all right, there we go. So, everybody, today uh, my special guests are Bobby Nash and Stuart Goffey. Is that, am I saying that right, Stuart? One second here. Can you hear me? Can you all hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I couldn't hear you for a second there. <clears throat> anyway, uh, was I saying your last name right there, Stuart? Uh, it's, it's actually Goffey. Goffey. Okay, I, I yep. just want to make sure because this, this is the first time we've actually talked on the phone. And everybody yeah, tune in. Strange. Yeah, everybody tune in at home. Um, uh, if you've been a fan of the show or been listening to the show at all, you know Bobby Nash has been a good friend of mine for I don't know about five years now or so. Bobby, right? Sounds about right. Yeah, and the last time we were talking about your snow series, and Stuart, you are the uh, voice actor or narrator for the snow series for Bobby, right? Y'all work together? Yes. So, um, Bobby, could you do like the 30-second intro for yourself, and then Stuart, could you do the same? Sure. Um, I'm Bobby Nash. I'm an author. Um, I write all kinds of stuff. Um yeah, that's me. <laughs> and Bobby, you've been on the show a couple times, and I, I always love having you on the show. So I really nice, appreciate you coming back on today. And Stuart, it's really nice to to be able to talk with you and meet uh, with you too. So could you give everybody kind of like the uh, the thirty second overview of of what you do and who you are? Sure, absolutely. Um, so I'm a, a voice actor and and currently audiobook narrator. Uh, so Bobby and I have had the opportunity to collaborate on on several projects now. The, the Snow series being the latest. Um, and he's he's done some other writing for uh, some other anthologies and kind of the, the pulp adventure genre uh, that I've had the opportunity to narrate as well. So we've gotten to know each other a little bit, and uh, his stories are a lot of fun to work with. So it's a good time for me. That's awesome. <clears throat> um, one of the things that we do on my show, Stuart, is my son Sebastian is a musician, and he always plays live for us. So he's going he's gonna to play live for us uh, for about a minute or so. And then we're going to come right into the interview. So, Sebastian, will you take it away? Mm -hmm. And this is a new song that he just uh, came up with this week. Thanks, Sebastian, for playing. Okay, so we, uh, Bobby, uh, we talked about like two weeks ago, and uh, we were talking about your new Suicide Bomb uh, book that's out, and we were also talking a lot about um, your collaboration for the audiobooks. So could you could you kind of give us like a background with um, working together, and then Stuart, can I hear your version of it? <laughs> Uh, hopefully they'll be the same. <laughs> well, it's always like two sides of the coin. It's like you know, hey, I, I was doing this, and then and then you know to kind of get the flip side of it, it's kind of neat too. It's like, yeah. oh, you know, I saw this and. Well, um, my my first bit of books that went to audio were stuff I had done for other publishers, uh, some some anthology work I had done, some things like that. Uh, other those the publishers were handling uh, getting those turned into audiobooks. Um, Stuart uh, was the uh, audio narrator for the Lance Star Sky Ranger series, which I have I wrote for, and uh, so that was where I first heard first heard Stuart uh, uh, perform. And uh, when I started getting last year in 2019, I started decided I was going to put the stuff that I self publish through my Ben Books imprint into audio. And so I figured I'd start with snow because I had several of those built up and I put them up and, uh, the way it works when you put it up, you put it up and open it up for auditions and Stuart saw it and says, Hey, I've enjoyed, I enjoyed the, the Lance star stuff. I enjoyed, and you know, and he enjoyed the sample that I put up and said, let's talk. And we did. And, um, 
already knowing his work made it an easy yes. And then after I heard it, uh, especially like the Snowfall is the first one. After I heard it, I was like, the, the gig is yours as long as you want it. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, so he's, uh, it's it's one of those weird things. It's it's very similar, like, I also write comics. And when you write comics, you have an idea in your head of what they're going to look like. And you send the script off. The artist gets it. It comes back. It's never what you think. <laughs> it's better. Mm-hmm. It's it's it gives it that extra level, and then the audio is the same way because when when I hear them in my head, I heard the voices a certain way, and then when the when the audio comes to me and I'm listening to the audio, and Stewart has given all these characters their own voice, they might not necessarily have been what I originally had in my head, but those are now the voices of these characters to me. So they all have their nice definitive. You, we could probably, in a lot of ways, go back and take out that he said and that you know Archer said or Snow said, and you would know who they are. Yeah. And so it's it's very much like giving it. it well, it's, it's exactly like giving it to an actor. And the actor takes the character and makes it his own. Just in, in the case of doing the audios, it's one actor doing everybody. <laughs> That is, I agree with you. Um, I, if you like cartoons at all, like if you ever watch mm-hmm. any, any cartoons, you you know oh, yeah. voice acting makes the cartoon. I mean, like literally the the uh, the voice makes it. So Stuart, what um what is your uh, like take on that? How did you guys? Because you, you obviously you worked together on a collaborative project, but then you worked together, you know. Right, and and Bobby's take on it is I I'll. I'll, I'll call it accurate and, and leave it there. But um, no, uh, we and to the to the point that uh, uh, about you know, narrators almost, almost like uh, hiring a narrator is almost like hiring an actor. And, and the, the vast majority of audiobook narrators in the business um, are actors. Um, yeah, voice uh, actors of right. one variety or another, mm-hmm. uh, and so it it is true that generally we consider ourselves to be or typically call ourselves voice actors, um, and it really is a uh, a terrific creative outlet uh, for those of us who have have been around the industry in one way or another. Um, I've been uh, a voiceover uh, voice actor uh, since mm, well. Intermittently since 1982, uh, 82 was my first um, voice acting job, and uh, didn't get into audiobooks until about four and a half, five years ago. Um, just because, really, until the uh, the tech revolution took place, the process of producing an audiobook uh, was very, very challenging uh, in terms of the amount of time that it takes. Right. And with the, the advent of, of a number of technologies, uh, and in particular, you know, the internet as a means of distribution and communication and so forth, it became possible for those of us who had studios at home, um, which is increasing all the time as equipment and technology becomes less expensive. But, um, there are, were quite a few folks who had gotten to the point where they were doing their, their other VO work out of studios in their homes. And the, the net just made it possible to really amp that up. Um, that and some, uh, some advances in recording technology made it possible to engineer you know, a much uh, much more efficient manner, I'll say. And so that made it possible to consider audiobooks. And so I took on a couple of projects and, and Lance Starr was one of my earlier ones. And um, that was an effort that, that involved uh, a number of authors in addition to Bobby. And uh, it was a genre that I really enjoyed uh, having grown up on, on series like Tom Swift and things like that. Um, Lance Starr was kind of right up my alley and, uh, and had a great time doing it and was really impressed by, um, 
how much time I could save just by uh, doing most of the, the production work myself. And fortunately, I have enough background. I've been around long enough that, that I knew kind of the do's and don'ts. And uh, so that, that went real well. And then when, uh, like Bobby said, when snow came up, uh, I thought, you know, well, I at least with Bobby know who I'm getting involved with here. And, uh, you know, <laughs> I've done some of his work before. And, and that's one of the interesting things with um, the, uh, the platform that Bobby and I were first introduced on. It's called ACX. Um, it's uh, an online platform that Amazon and Audible put together to connect producers, narrator producers with authors or publishers to get audiobook product projects done and out on the market, mostly on Audible, but also on Amazon and iTunes. And um, the process is, involves putting out a, a portion of the book to be published and then inviting auditions. And, and like Bobby said, uh, you get uh, whoever happens to come across your, your book and takes a look at it and thinks it might be interesting will we'll submit an audition for you. And so then it begins kind of a dance between the two parties uh, where the, uh, the, the author or publisher is listening to auditions and trying to, to select someone that they think they might like to work with. And at the same time, the narrators are trying to kind of feel out that author or publisher to decide if, if it's a, a, really a work that they want to do based on a small segment of the, uh, of the material that they've been provided with. And, and whether it seems as though that that author or publisher is someone that'll be good to work with. And so there's a kind of a little back and forth period uh, during which all of that happens. And if everybody decides they're happy with the arrangement, then they go, go into the production process. Um, and it's always good from a narrator's perspective when you have somebody like Bobby who's really invested in their work. Um, there are an awful lot of people out there who crank out some kind of written material that they insist on calling a book and then put it up for audio work with the, the thought that that will somehow launch them into the stratosphere of, of award-winning sales. Um, and they haven't really even spent the time to turn out a decent book. Um, it becomes obvious if, after you read a little bit that they probably don't even know what an editor is. Um, and that kind of, that, that, that can be a, a bit of a situation, but, but with Bobby, it was great. Um, stories were a lot of fun to do. And then when he came along with snow, um, for some reason, uh, and I think it's probably that, that, you know, maybe Bobby and I kind of grew up in a similar era. Um, uh, but the, the whole, um, uh, the whole take on snow and the, the type of stories they are and the, the kind of characters and relationships just really clicked. Um, and so I have a great time doing them. Um, I feel like I know the characters quite well. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, they, you really do get to know them. Um, uh, it's, it's kind of funny how that, that develops, but, uh, Archer Snow and I get along real well. So, That's great. Um, <laughs> Let me do a station ID. And then I actually, uh, I have pulled up the ACX. It's got, um, they have a sample that we can play for snowfalls. So, sure. all right. You're listening to the Adam Messer show. I'm your host, Adam Messer. And you're listening to us on WRUULP Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. And this is a sample of Snowfalls. So let's listen to that, everybody. Still smiling, he pulled the Glock 30 from his shoulder holster and squeezed the trigger. Snow felt the first impact, but it wasn't until the second that he realized he had been shot. The next thing he knew, he was knocked off his feet, flying backward through the air. Snow dropped to the asphalt, unmoving, blood leaking out of two very large holes in his body. A tingling sensation in his extremities told him that the blood loss was substantial. Despite the humid climb, he felt a chill run through him. He was dying. Ortega had only fired three shots. The first clipped Agent Snow's arm, spinning him around. The second missed completely. The third hit its mark, center mass. Snow stared up into a brilliant blue sky punctuated with a few fluffy white clouds as blood pooled beneath him. 
All right, everybody. So that was a sample of Snowfalls written by Bobby Nash and narrated by voice actor Stuart Goffey. So that is, you know, you can tell. I mean, it's it, like you were saying before uh, the little station ID, uh, Stuart, that some folks don't put out really a polished product. And then they think if they put it out as an audiobook, that it'll just make it so much better. And, you know, it, it all goes back to the story to me. I think it all goes back to the story. And you can tell that that, that story, you know, Snowfalls, it's, it's a well-written book. And then the narration, your, your voice acting brings that to life, you know, because you can, you can feel it, you know, as you're reading it. So that's one of the things I love. I'm, I'm a big audiobook fan. And, um, I think audiobooks add a, another level to, cause I grew up listening to like talk radio and stuff like that. And I think audiobooks add another level to the story. Um, it's a great way to catch up on reading if you're out and about, um, you know, even if you're at home, you just, instead of turning the radio on or the TV on, you, know, you can turn on an audio book. So. That's great for me to hear. I'm, uh, it, it always, uh, it's, it's always good for, uh, you know, actors love to hear from audiences and, uh, uh the, the idea that, that people enjoy, the work and and get invested in in uh, the characters as a result of, of what we do is, is always great to hear so appreciate that thanks <clears throat> i was excited uh because we have uh i'm actually in a group um i was recently published with a an anthology um rachel brune bobby nash introduced us a, a little bit over a year now i guess it was bobby that sounds right no. yeah i i had published a short novella last year Stuart. And, um, Bobby introduced me to Rachel and she has a, a website and she interviewed me for her website. It's infamous scribbler. And then she invited me to be part of her horror anthology and the horror anthology came out in October. And because I love audiobooks so much, I actually commissioned a local voice actress or voice actor, um, named Aledria Hurt. And she recorded my short story for me as an audible book. Um, and what I end up doing was I, I have a six month contract. And so, you know, audio, the audio part with ACX and the audible part, I guess when you have that, you have to link it to a, a book on Amazon. Right. And, uh, so I have a six month contract where I can't release a standalone product or a standalone book. But I released it for free on my on my podcast website, and I I love you know the fact that um, I have <laughs> had a, a short story and an audio book. This is like the, that was like the first audio book that I had, and um, we uh, as a group there were some other people that were looking into doing like an audio book. I think I'm the only one that's done one um, with the anthology so far, but there are a couple other people that have done audio books um, as writers working with voice actors or whatever. But I think it's interesting when you add that extra layer to it. I mean, it seems like audiobooks are are picking up a lot, especially like with Amazon. Podcasts are huge right now. You know, I know a lot of people are putting out their own products and stuff like that, but I think what you said earlier though, it it does it really goes back to the story and it goes back to you know, is the work polished? Is it edited? Is it, you know, does it make sense? You know, is it coherent? Um, all those things I think go into the production value of a good story. Right. So oh, absolutely working together. Um, and, and Bobby, from your perspective, you know, writing the story and then hearing the audition and you're like, Oh yeah, this is perfect. Um, and you said, as long as you want to do it, you know, that kind of thing. Let's talk about the nuts and bolts of actually doing the back and forth with y'all. So, like, okay. part of the process. Because what, what I do on the show, Stuart, is I talk with authors and artists and entertainers. And we talk about, you know, their process and stuff like that. So, can you kind of walk us through the process of how do you, you know, how do you do this with Audible? Um you know, what are some of the, some of the, uh, obstacles 
you know, that you had to overcome or maybe some, some, you know, pitfalls that you want to avoid, that kind of thing. And some just, just general advice for people out who, who out there who want to do the same kind of thing. Yeah. Well, ACX is fairly easy to use. It's, I mean, they're, they have a lot of very good information on there. Um, when you're looking for a, your narrator after you've, opened, you've you've started the process, it actually lets you break it down. Do you want a male uh, male actor, female actor? Are you looking for an American accent, British accent, et cetera, et cetera? There's all kinds of questions that way. So if you have an idea in your mind, you can actually go and you know pick all that and narrow it down, or you can leave it open to just whoever reads it that, that that's interested. But after after we've done that, now that I, basically the way I do a, the, a snowbook now is I I upload it, uh, let Stuart know it's there, and he basically takes it from there with the with the uh, the the recording and producing the audio. That's he handles all of that and takes care of the nuts and bolts of making it sound right and and all of that. Um, I also I go in um, take the cover and adjust it because the audio audible covers are square as is as opposed mm-hmm. to like a book cover mm-hmm. so i i had i adjust the covers and that way i too i can put stewart's name on the cover it's not just using the cover that's on right. amazon right so I, I i design that and get that uploaded while he's doing that and then that, as he produces uh chapters he'll upload them and i can listen to them uh listening for things like uh Oh, we mispronounced this guy's name or that stuff like that. It's, it's usually it's very little, um, and he'll go through it. And once he's done, and uh, he can probably he can tell you more about his part. But once he's done, I give it the final approval, click OK, and then it goes. ACX gives it a a QA mm-hmm. uh, once over to make sure there's no pops and whistles or whatever in the audio. Make sure it's a clean audio. Once that's done and, and it's and they've approved it, it's on sale at Amazon and Audible within twelve to twenty four hours. Oh wow! And at that point, at that point, it's back on us to we're promoting. So, so that's great to know for the the author side of it because I'm sure there's a lot more people out there who are listening that would be authors and that they maybe haven't done anything. On your side, uh, Stuart, with the um, the voice acting and the production you know, work with it, the recording and all that. What are some tips and tricks um, that work with you? Because obviously you have to accept the client that you do the audition. You know, what are some of the tips that you would offer for people out there who, you know, are interested in getting into voice acting like that? Sure. Well, um, so there's a, <laughs> there's a, there's a very good resource um, online that I, I like to direct people to um, from a, a very well-known uh, voice coach. His name is Sean Allen Pratt. Um, and it's, he, he, calls it his, his, uh, so you want to be a voiceover talent test, or you want to be an audiobook. I guess it's, so you want to be an audiobook narrator test. Uh, and in a nutshell, it's basically, uh, find a book you like, uh, go into a closet, uh, with a chair, sit down and take a light with you and read aloud for two hours. No, no breaks. Mm. Um, just read aloud for two hours. Um, if you get that far and you haven't decided that, that this is just not something that, that you really want to focus on, do it again the next day, do it again for a full week. Hmm. If you get to the end of the week and you haven't decided to shoot yourself, then you may be (laughs) where, (laughs) (laughs) um, in, in, in all truth though, um, that's, I exaggerate a little bit, but uh, Sean's resource is uh, is an excellent one, and he's an excellent coach. Um, and uh, but for many people uh, who get into uh, or think they want to get into audio production, um, they can find it to be a bit overwhelming. Mm-hmm. Um, I would say that before you decide to make the leap, as it were, uh, to to do as much learning as possible. Um, first and foremost. Find a good voice coach, um, someone who knows about the audiobook industry uh, and can give you some good critical listening uh, and, and coaching. Mm-hmm. 
so that you've, you've got some understanding of how you want to approach things, what audio, audiobooks are all about, because uh, we're not talking about radio drama. Right. We're not talking about podcasts. We're talking very specifically about audiobooks, and they are a genre of their own. Right. right. Um, so, so you want to make sure that you, you understand that whole thing first uh, and then get familiar with uh, either one of two things. Make really good friends with an audio engineer that can do your editing and, and mastering work for you or learn the technology to do that yourself. Because those are really the two options that you have. You're either going to do it yourself or you're going to hire someone to do it for you. Uh, and then as far as the, the process of actually doing audiobooks, uh, ACX is a great threshold for people that are new to the industry on both sides of the fence, um, whether they're, they're authors, publishers, or, or producer narrators. And uh, so kind of picking up from, from what Bobby was saying, uh, the... Uh, the process from the narrator's perspective is, uh, as we've already said, we're looking for projects that are interesting, that look like they'd be fun to work on, that are well-written, and so on. And so the first introduction to that is we see an entry come across um, on ACX, and we as narrators have the ability to search for certain genres or types of books or lengths of books or types of contract. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second. Um, and we find a, one that looks like it might be interesting. And along with uh, all of the other information that's uploaded, the, the author will upload an excerpt to be used for audition purposes. So we'll take that excerpt, we'll develop an audition around that excerpt, record it, and upload it. And that becomes our introduction to the author, or uh, I say author publisher on ACX, they're, they're known as a rights holder. So whoever holds rights to the book in terms of publication uh, uh, in audiobook format is who the narrator works with. And so then we'll either get a notice from ACX that says you have an offer or it says uh, the rights holder has chosen someone else. And so it's sort of a, you know, don't call us, we'll call you kind of situation, which most actors are very accustomed to, right? So we, <laughs> we, just, yeah, we, yeah. we wait for the reviews to come back. And so you, you get that offer to produce and you go and you take a look and, and the offer consists of schedule um, and, and the agreement as far as, as payment is concerned. And so if everything is satisfactory for you, then you can accept the offer. Um, if there are things that you want to change about it, whether it's schedule or whatever other um, aspect of the contract, you can talk it over with the rights holder. And if you if you need to make changes, then you can decline that offer and they can make you another offer with different terms. So once you, you settle on things and the offer has been accepted, then ACX has a step that they refer to as the first 15. And that's you record 15 minutes of material from the book. It doesn't have to be the first 15 minutes actually of the book, but it's just the first 15 minutes that you choose to record in order to give the author a more full featured flavor for what they're getting from you as a narrator. And this is a good opportunity to involve things like major character names and places and things like that. So that you've got pronunciations correct and uh -huh. all those sorts of things. And you submit that, and then once the rights holder approves of the first 15, then you launch the formal production process for the entire book. Um, and as Bobby said, uh, the rights holder has the opportunity to review uh, before final approval on the book, and then ACX has a, uh, a QC cycle that you know, they can take once it goes to them for Q qc it can take up to two weeks for them to to get through it and everything but then once they approve it it goes on sale quite quickly um and then you're out there and your audiobook is published and, and it's time for celebration and everybody is all happy and dancing around so that's kind of the fun part that's, uh, awesome. Well, that's awesome. awesome yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's awesome um, we've got to do a station break uh real quick everybody um we're going to be coming right back with Bobby Nash and Stuart Gofi. We're talking about uh, audiobooks and we're talking about writing and uh, we're going to we're going to get more into it after we come back from the break. This portion of WRUULP Savannah Soundings programming is brought to you by listeners and the Ships of the Sea Museum. One of the we hidden secrets of the Ships of the Sea Museum is its gardens. 
Native plants are interspersed with exotic tropical plants throughout the gardens. Visitors to Savannah can bring in their takeout meals and dine among the trident maples and use the complimentary Wi-Fi. You can find out more about the Ships of the Sea Museum at the website shipsofthesea.org. WRUULP, Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. The Savannah Riverkeeper will present the 10th Annual Roast on the River, a benefit for the organization, the primary guardian of the Savannah River, providing education, advocacy, and action for the river's 10,000-square-mile watershed. The event will take place at Hogan's Marina on Wilmington Island on Saturday, January 18th from 6 to 9 p.m. More information is available at savannahriverkeeper.org. All right, and this is Sebastian Messer, and he is playing for us live here at WRUU LP Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings Community Radio with Global Soul. That was Sebastian Messer, and you are listening to The Adam Messer Show. I'm your host, Adam Messer, and we talk with authors, artists, and entertainers. We talk to them about their creative process and you know overcoming obstacles, those kind of things. I want to take a, a minute to uh, ask everybody, since it's the new year, if you enjoy listening to programs like this one here on WRUU, we are an all-volunteer-based community radio station. That means that we don't get um, any kind of government sponsors or anything like that. You just heard our underwriting announcement. So if you're interested in being an underwriter for our show or for any of the shows or the station in general, you can go to WRUU.org and you can click on the links there. Um if you don't want to advertise uh, with an underwriting statement there, then you can do like a donation. You can do a one-time donation or you can do a recurring donation. Uh, every dollar helps with the station funding for, you know, costs like engineering and, you know, like we had to replace our soundboard last year. We had to get a new computer. Those all go into, you know, the costs and the fees associated with bringing live radio to you. So shows like mine are able to do that because of people like you listening and, you know, contributing. So I just want to thank you for helping us out here and uh, being part of the WRUU family. All right. So today, everybody, uh, this first half an hour, we've been talking with author Bobby Nash. And you may have recognized him from being on the show a couple different times. And Bobby and I have been friends for about five years or so. Um, And also we have... Bobby's friend Stuart Gofi, who is a voice actor, and he has narrated uh, the Snow series, which is Bobby's. Um, well, I want to, you know, I kind of it, it reminds me of like a, a detective, almost detective type story, kind of like a modern style, uh, like agent, like FBI type thing, yeah, mystery. The, the, the snow books, yes, are definitely very modern day books, but. In tone, they are like my love letter to the the PI and cop yeah, shows. the pulp I fiction type watching. stuff. Yeah, yeah. So there's, you know, snow is snow is a bit of an amalgamation of things like yeah. you know, <laughs> uh, the Rockford Files and Magnum PI and yeah. things like that. There's a lot of those type of feel to it. Yeah. So yeah, I uh, I remember last time we were talking. Uh, we were talking about like if you like 80s style. 
you know, like horror that uh, you'd like my Blood Thrasher series. And if you like 80s style, like uh, detective type stuff, you'd like the Snow series, you know? Yeah, because so yeah, they're, 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 the, even though they are thrillers, they're, they're action thrillers. Right, so right. there's going to be, there's going to be some type of action, whether it be, you know, we've had, you know, fist fights and we've had gun fights and we've had car chases and we, you know, we've gotten a lot of, of positive people, uh, uh, comments about the car chase in book two snowstorm. Mm. Uh, it's uh, people seem to love that car chase. Every show and, back in the seventies and eighties and every movie used to have a, you know, you could count on any action movie or any action show. You could count on, you know, a car chase. Yeah. But it's, uh, having it in, in just prose was, it was tough to write, but it, it came out nice. And then, Obviously, in the narration, it's re- it's really nice because he's able to give it more of inflection. I tell people if the names Stephen J. Cannell or Donald P. Belisario mean anything to you, then you'll like snow. Mm, that's good. That's good. Ooh, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I think you need to coin you, you need to coin that on a like one of your infographics there, Bobby. That was uh, a good one. <laughs> yeah. I uh, I actually I I, I met Stephen. Oh, well, I didn't meet him in person, but I did. Uh, email with Stephen J. Canal uh, shortly before he died. We had mm-hmm. we had run into someone that introduced us. And I, I was so bummed I never got to send him anything to read. Oh wow. <laughs> but he was but he was such a he was such a in just our emails, he was such a very open and very um you know um I'm blanking on the word I'm looking for, but he was very, you know, keep on working. Approachable. Doing, you know, yes. And very uh and was, encouraging. Yes, encouraging. That's the word I was looking for. He was very encouraging about the work and to keep working and all that. And yeah, this, this, this definitely uh, in the spirit of the shows that he did. Yeah, definitely. And because that's stuff I grew up watching, I, I, I just dug that stuff. You know. I'll tell you. Let me let me share. Um, and I think I shared this with you before, Bobby. Maybe, but uh, let me share with the audience. I was an avid reader as a kid. I used to read a ton of books as a kid. And then as an adult, almost the last, uh, I guess, gosh, maybe the last, I'm 20, I'm 43 now. So like the last 23, 24 years, uh, I've read mostly nonfiction, mostly leadership, mostly management, self-development type stuff. And um, I got into the listening to audio books probably five or six years ago now because a friend of mine named Chris he has ADHD really bad, and he has a hard time being able to focus reading, you know, a hard book, you know, like paperback or hardbound book or whatever. So, but he would pick up these audiobooks and he'd listen, you know, he's listening to these audiobooks and listening to these audiobooks. And, you know, it's like, ah, you know, I don't, whatever. So we went to lunch and he was playing, um, I believe it was Malcolm Gladwell's um, Tipping Point, I think it was, that we were listening to at the time. But anyway, I was listening to this and it was, in the author's voice, right? So, you know, the author's there and, and I've listened and I, I just started listening to those um, audiobooks. And uh, I've matter of fact, I've got a credit on my um, Audible account right now. And I was looking around. I was like, oh, where should I, you know, which one of these snow books should I start with? <laughs> so <laughs> I'm going to be picking that up later on today. But um, I love the audiobooks uh, because of some of those reasons that you were talking about earlier, Stuart. It's it's not necessarily a podcast because it is a produced piece of work. If you know, and I'm a I'm gonna put this out there, just like the self published stuff, you know, where it could be a lot of whatever, you know, at least Audible they go through and they they check for you know voice quality or whatever. And I'll give an example. Um, when my poetry book, when I published my poetry book last fall, somebody said, "Oh, you should you should make that into an audio book." So I was like, you know what, I'm gonna do that. And I recorded uh, the 25 poems. I put everything together, and I went to upload it to Audible, and it got rejected right off the bat because I recorded it in 128 KBS instead of the 192. Right. I, I didn't know. I didn't do my research, you know. And then I learned, okay, well, I need to do it, you know, at this level. So when the, so taking that information, when I talked with uh, Aledria about recording. And doing the the audiobook for my uh, wrong turn story, I said, "Hey, it has to be 192 KBS or higher." And I said, "It has to, you know, do this." And it came back 
perfect. I mean, and I told her, I said, you know, please do it in different chapters or whatever. And, um, and working with her, talking about working with, you know, your, your, um, you know, your narrator or your voice actor. When she, I like her voice that she uses for, she, she does a lot of these short stories that she puts on her podcast. And I like her narrator voice, but the way that she was doing the, the story for me was emotionless. And I was like, I need you to have emotion when you're narrating. I said, and then the other part for the characters, you know, this is, this is, you know, the kind of person this is, and this is the kind of person that is and so on. So I was trying to give her like a, you know, in her mind, like who I was expecting the person to be like, it was a sales guy who he's a family man, but he wants to put everything on this sale. You know, so he's kind of blown his wife off um, that day about, you know, because he's really focused on the sale or whatever. And I was like, he's not a bad guy. He's not one of these bad guys. It's like just all about him. But he he kind of did, you know, he kind of got in that routine or whatever. So we had that that conversation about, you know, those things. And she took the feedback and came back. And I just I loved I love the way that she narrated the book, you know. And um, I actually plan on when I'm able to self-publish the wrong turn story independently from the anthology. I wasn't going to do it originally, but because I uh, it, the only reason why I'm going to do it is because the only way I could do the audible is to have a standalone book. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I I love the idea. And then Bobby and I were talking about, um, you know, how he's got these, you know, audible, you know, all these audio books and the Ben audio and. You know, and Bobby, I just love how you've got the Ben books and now you've got, you know, Ben books audio. And I like the new, uh, I think we were talking about the logo and all, but I yeah, love I, that hustle, man. I just love that hustle that y'all, well, I mean, I, like, it's great. I wanted it to, you know, I, I want it to be a professional, you know, thing. It's a professional, yeah, yeah. it's a business. It's, yeah. Um, because there are a lot of people that do this as a hobby and I have nothing against people that do this as a hobby. Um, you know, but as uh, my goal is, this is a business. And so I try to treat it as such. And, uh, you know, uh, part of what I do when I, when I do put a book up to, to be, a, you know, it's like, I have an, I have a marketing and promotion idea and plan, you right. know, do you want to be a part of it? Right. You know, um, I, and I do the same with comics. I'll ask the artist, you want to be part of the promoting of this book, you know? I asked Stuart, I said, do you want to be part of promoting this book? Which, you know, part of, part of the reason he's here, he, he agreed. He said, yeah, let's, let's, you know, uh, you know, happy to be it. So we've done podcasts and radio interviews and giveaways and things like that to promote the book, obviously social media and posting stuff there. Right. Um, so yeah, so it's, and, and it, it helps, it helps, you know, if, you know, if the people involved were all out doing bits and bits and pieces, and uh yeah it's just it's 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 a fun experience um i you know hopefully for 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 everybody involved um it's been pretty pretty easy for me i am i i i get a big thrill whenever new chapters are uploaded for me to listen to because even though i know the story it's going to be something new to me you know and same as when I get comic book art in, in. you know, it's I, I know what's going to be on the page, but I don't really know what's going to be on the page. So there's that feeling of discovery, you know, that comes in that, you know, as a creator, you know, I get really excited by. Mm-hmm. And and ACX divvies up the, you know, the, the work with everybody pretty, pretty well, which I, I think works in terms, too, because while Stewart's recording these. I'm not, I'm not pestering him about them. Right. You know, cause if, if it was done a different way, you know how, you know how we, we are, we're so protective of our babies. We'd be, you know, we would make the process a lot more difficult if we, if we could. Yeah. It's like you had and, to stand yeah, away and right. let the person do the work. Yeah. I know what you mean. Right. 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 Well, yeah. It, you know, especially when you do the first one or two, you know, you get that trust though, after that first one, then you know, it's like, okay, I know, you know, uh, there was one, uh, the third, third book, Stuart actually, you know, come up and he goes, Hey, you know, you got the wrong car in here, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd written something about the, he jumps into the back seat and Stuart's like, 
that car doesn't have a back seat. Uh oh. <laughs> so it required some fixing. But you know what? That great partnership. Yeah, yeah. You know, he could have just read it as is and went to heck with it, and you know. But you know, he's like, no, no. We went, so we fixed it. I fixed it in the print version, and you know, off we went. And uh, so yeah, so so I'm loving the back and forth. You know, I, I I love the partnership. I think we've got we've we've got a good we've got a good run of books here. And you know, as soon as I finish the next one, we'll, we'll be on to book five. <laughs> yeah, that one's kicking. That one's kicking my tail. I'm gonna tell you, because <laughs> um, it was supposed to come out in November. Then I pushed it to December. And now I've pushed it to January just to get it right. Well, let's and, talk. Let's talk about that too, because uh, deadlines, right? Um, mm-hmm. Obviously with creating at the work you know and then having to do that Stuart, when you're doing the uh the narration side of it you you have a lot of the creative process too because you have to you have to figure mm-hmm. out like the cadence of the book and you have to figure out like how the character should act and you know in your mind you're creating you're you're also creating that character in a tangible sense outside of you know being printed and making it into a voice of a person yeah Right. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, it's sort of it's, it's an interesting process uh, in that uh, it's, it's the only genre in which as, as a performer, uh, I, I not only get to act all of the roles, but I'm the director, too. So, right, it's, right. Uh, you know, the, if you if you have a little bit of megalomania, it kind of helps out. Um, <laughs> OK. <laughs> <laughs> I've never known a person that didn't like me. Right. <laughs> but um yeah, and and uh, you know what what Bobby was saying about establishing that co- collaboration is is really important. Mm-hmm. And uh, in kind of going back a little bit to the process, um, when you're a when you're a rights holder looking to to find that uh, that that narrator, um, somebody who's who's really going to do your work justice, and, and hopefully that means that that as a rights holder you you've taken the time and the care to to invest in making the product as, as good as it can be before you go trying to, to find your narrator. Um, but ACX has three uh, types of contract that you can uh, enter into, that you can you can offer your book under. And they're known as, as Royalty Share, Royalty Share Plus, and Per Finished Hour. And so Royalty Share um, is the way most books are released under ACX just because most books that are released under ACX are from rights holders that have very low budgets and uh, don't have a lot to invest in the project. And so they're willing to say, uh, I will trade uh, a portion of the royalties from the audiobook in exchange for having it produced. Mm-hmm. Okay. So all of the risk is on the narrator for that type of production because. You know, if the book doesn't sell, the narrator doesn't get paid at all. Right, right. right? And and then on the at the other end of the spectrum, there's per finished hour, where the narrator says, this is how much I cost per finished hour. And the, the producer either uh, chooses to pay that or doesn't, right? They can they say, okay, well, you know, I don't have that kind of money to spend, so I'm not, you know, not going to do that kind of deal. Um needless to say the most experienced narrators and probably the, the best performers that you're going to find are on the per finished hour end of things uh, just because all of the risk there is on the author's end or on the rights holders end right because right. the narrator knows what they're getting paid when they're done they're done and that's that's that um, they really don't care much about how the book performs because they've done their thing they've gotten paid in between those two is this concept called royalty share plus And that's where both ends kind of meet in the middle. And what that involves is paying your narrator a reduced fee per finished hour and a portion of the royalties. And so it means the rights holder has to invest less up front Mm -hmm. and the narrator uh, has a little more guarantee of some income from the project um, and kind of an interest in seeing that the the sales of the book go well um so that's kind of a a neat way to approach things Uh, and i would suggest if you are a rights holder looking to do your first audio book seriously consider royalty share plus or per per finished hour type contracts just because 
doing so, you'll you're, you will automatically winnow out a lot of the um, narrators who are less experienced. Um, many narrators get on ACX with no experience, and the, the, they're kind of trying to use the platform to learn the business. Yeah. And so they'll take royalty share contracts only as a way to say, I'm going to build up my experience, and you as the rights, hold, rights holder get to be the victim. And, um, you know, the bad <laughs> thing about that, too, is, um, you know, the people that uh, – and I, I did photography for a, a while professionally – and uh, there were a lot of folks who would say, oh, this would be great exposure for you. And yes. I was like, uh, no, I don't need exposure. I don't want that our, kind yeah, of exposure. Our standard response to that in the industry is people die of exposure. Yeah. The, I, was, the, I was about to say the same thing. <laughs> exposure does nothing to pay my bills, you know. And, I mean, don't get me wrong. I've, I have done a lot of charitable work. Like I used to volunteer and do photos for mm -hmm. charity events and things like that. But – those folks weren't asking me to do exposure work, you know, right. and I've done stuff like trade for, you know, photos like, you know, I'd work with a model and say, hey, I'll I'll take photos. And instead of charging me a model fee, I won't charge you a photography fee. We do an exchange. You know, right. so I like the fact that you're talking about doing something because it is, you know, so, for example, let's just say the, you know, I was looking at the, the snow books. They're about maybe two and a half, three hours, mm -hmm. you know, whatever your time because you're an experienced voice actor is going to be mid range to high range, you know, for your right. fees versus right. someone who is entry level, they're going to be no cost or low cost and right. you get what you pay for. Right. So in most cases, yes. Yeah, you really do. You get what you pay for. If, if somebody is willing to work for free, most of the time the work is not worth the free money, <laughs> but now there's there's the occasional exception and i will say that that you know as a as a performer every now and then something crosses the the bow that you say oh you know that really looks like a lot of fun yeah you yeah know? yeah that those it's, are it's, those are collaborations that's not that's what i'm getting at is like those kind of works those are collaborations but i like how right. the structure you're talking about where it's a win-win you know you don't necessarily have to put a whole lot of money up front but the voice actor is getting something and they're also getting a stake in the, in the product. You know, so, you know, if somebody's just getting paid, like I'll give an example, if they're just getting paid by the hour and they don't have any investment in that, in that story. Yeah. They're right. going to do the best that they can as far as the voice acting, because they want to get paid obviously. But then afterwards, you know, they have no investment in the pro project. So they might not even care to promote it or to share it. Right. Generally speaking, uh, as a rights holder, you can make that expectation, right? So if if you do um, pay your narrator per finished hour, mm -hmm. there is no expectation on the back end for them to be involved in your promotion or or, or your you know any ongoing activity with the product. Mm -hmm. um, and generally speaking, personally, um, I most of my authors, uh, and, and I'll leave it at most. Um, I've had very good relationships with, mm -hmm. and uh, and I'm willing to take the time to do an interview here and there and things like that, um, whether or not I have an interest in the royalties, um, just because uh, you know it's it's like any other relationship you have. You you want to see your your friends and your colleagues succeed. Um, so uh, there is that aspect, but but for many narrators especially uh those that are most in demand obviously they just don't have the time um to, to be able to to take you know an hour here and there to do uh to do interviews or to uh whatever the the promotional opportunity might be um and that's so that's sort of a fact of life yeah um but you know the, the flip side of the coin is um with uh, and the, the really kind of the beauty of the whole royalty share plus concept um, is that you do have the opportunity to build a relationship um, mm -hmm. where neither party might not have considered the other to begin with. Right. So, right, right. Um, you know, someone like, well, I'll take Bobby, for example, um, who's, you know, not writing for a major house, may not have a ton of resources available. Um obviously is cares about the product and is invested in a good result. 
um, but may not consider somebody like me just because, you know, they look at my rates and say, I can't do that. Um, and on the other side of that coin, I might look at something that Bobby produces and say, oh, that's only three hours. A typical audio book is nine to 11 hours. Right, uh -huh. right. You know, that's not really... You know, so that's that's not a project, and I can even filter my what I'm looking for in terms of projects by length, and so it might not even a project like that might not even come across uh, in my you know, listings of things that are available. Um, and it was just for our situation the fact that um, Bobby and I had been introduced previously through Lance Star, which as an anthology series was a whole different ball game because you know you're one from Bobby's perspective, you're one author amongst many involved in the thing and the rights holder is actually a third party. So that was kind of a, a, a curious situation. Uh, but we got to know each other's work before we had an opportunity to collaborate just the two of us. And so that was right. a, a great entree there. So, but uh, yeah, for, for any rights holder who's out there, anybody that's got a book, they're thinking about turning it into an audio book. I would really seriously consider Going the royalty share plus route, if you don't have the resources for that off the bat, do what one of my other authors did. Um, she said, I don't have the resources for that right now. Would you be willing to wait until I'm ready? Hmm. And to me as an actor, that's, you know, absolutely. Um, you know, you pay me that compliment to say that you, you appreciate my work enough to make the effort to meet my rates for royalty share plus. Um, you bet I'm going to help you out there. That's great. That's yeah. great. And there's there's other ways, you know, like, you know, it's like, you know, ACX asks us to put in deadlines, but I'm like, you know what? You get it to me when you can get it to me because I know you're busy. Right. So, so, so we're, you can be flexible and, yeah. and then that helps a lot because, you know, time is indeed money. Absolutely. I, that, that's the point that I was getting at earlier was like, you know, it, and I'm in the same boat. I mean, I'm an indie author and, you know, my, my stuff is all elbow, you know, elbow grease and my own work, you know, and my own funding. So like, for example, with, um, with working with Aledria, I didn't really understand the royalty split thing. So I just, I just commissioned her for, you know, a small fee and she did it for a small right. fee for me. But Knowing now what I'm going to do when I actually publish it, I'm going to split royalties with her on it mm -hmm. because, you know, I feel like that would be a lot more uh, equitable for both of us, more fair, I guess. And, um, you know, anyway, we're uh, at the end of this hour. Um, I really appreciate both of y'all being on the show today. Uh, you've been listening to Bobby Nash and Stuart Goffey. Y'all, thank you so much for being on the show today. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Great to be here. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, we've had a lot of fun. Um, I, actually, I'm going to be with you for another hour, I think. But uh, Yeah, yeah, you're but, definitely uh, going to be with us for another hour. I just want to yeah. – I'm going to have to wrap this one up so I can do the uh, station IDs and all, and um, and then well, we're going to be back after four. Right, well, real quick, uh, where can people find you, Stuart? Uh, Stuart Goffey, uh, G-A-U-F-F-I. Uh, if you, you Google that, you will find me, I guarantee I appreciate that catch there, Bobby, too, because <laughs> I, I totally forgot to ask. <laughs> Here's the hosting podcast. It finally pays off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Yeah. All right. So, everybody, stay tuned. Uh, for the next hour, we're going to have Bobby Nash with us. Um, and uh, like you said, Stuart, where, where's that website at again? So, uh, Stuart, S-T-U-A-R-T, Gofi, G-A-U-F-F-I, or just Google G-A-U-F-F-I. You'll find me all over the place, Facebook, Twitter, wherever. And I know Bobby, yours is bobbynash.com. So right. boom, boom, boom. All right, y'all, you're listening to WRUU LP Savannah, Georgia, 107.5 FM, WRUU.org. We are Savannah Soundings, community radio with global soul. This portion of WRUU LP Savannah Soundings programming is brought to you by listeners and the Ships of the Sea Museum. One of the hidden secrets of the Ships of the Sea Museum is its gardens, native plants,